Good afternoon. My name is Major General Jeremy Ruja, and Georgette was my aunt. And Georgette Hare was a formidable lady. She was tall. Uh, she was always looking smart and well turned out. She was always wearing wonderful clothes. No jeans and a t-shirt for her, thank you very much. It was as if she was waiting for the Queen to come and call any moment and she would be ready for her. Um, she was, uh, had a deepish voice and expressed her views in very forthright, forceful ways and with a, with a lot of wit and in a, such a logical way that when she got to the end of what she was saying, um, there was nothing more to be said, really. <laughs> There's no reply. I met her first when I was a young teenager, and I was terrified of her, absolutely terrified, because she was a very, very strong personality indeed. But when I realized that she wasn't uh, going to eat me alive, I got on better terms with her, and I understand and enjoyed her company uh, very much better. She and her husband uh, lived in a set in Albany, in Piccadilly. And of course, her husband was my father's brother, younger brother. And in the set in Piccadilly uh, was a very upmarket address for a very upmarket family to live. But I remember once saying to her there, um, Aunt Georgette, it's, it's terribly noisy here from the traffic. There was no, no double glazing or anything like that. It's terribly noisy. Why don't you move to, to a sort of quieter place? And she said, uh, oh, oh, no, dear boy. She, she always called me dear boy. Whether it was a, a term of endearment or she couldn't remember my name, I never <laughs> quite knew. No, dear boy, she said. It is absolutely perfect for me. It is equidistant from the only two places where I shop. Fortnum's up there and Harrods down there. And that's exactly what she did. She was a very practical lady and she had her feet very firmly on the ground. Which is why it just amazed me to find that she could shut herself away from the rest of the world and sit down and write these wonderful Regency romances which had a great deal of wit, a great deal of fun to them, and were um, published in the autumn to be in time for the Christmas present market. Uh, and they sold, of course, absolutely wonderfully. Um, I think that the, the I think that the, she, she wrote so brilliantly and I, I remember that at that time there was someone, one of the papers used to produce a list at the end of the year of how many books had been sold in the year by an author. The first was always what? Hmm? Bible. The Bible. Exactly so. No one's going to beat the Bible. Well, they may not, they may de these days, who knows? First was the Bible, but in that year, Georges Hare was second second in the whole of this country. And she was there or thereabouts for the whole time that they were keeping that sort of uh, uh, check on it. Um, in sum, therefore, her, her writing of 50 years of writing from the 1920s to the 1970s, she has given and continues to give a huge amount of pleasure to a huge amount of people all over the world. And we are very lucky to have her to honor for that. Uh, finally, I think my, my, my oldest memory of her um, is that she was very friendly, very generous to us, very generous indeed. Portland's wicker baskets came every Christmas without a shadow of doubt. Um, but I think 
If I may be allowed just to say that, uh, as her oldest living relative, that she would have greatly enjoyed today and would have appreciated tremendously being allowed to have the honor of having a blue badge uh, plaque put up today. So I, I would like just to thank everyone who has had a part in organizing today, Selena in particular, uh, and her gang, for making it such a special day to remember a very, very special lady. Thank you very much.